Greetings guys, this is Tograph and today I've got a, another replay for you. Me of me playing in the platoon with Crazy and Yogurt. With me driving the T-44, the tier 8 Russian medium tank. And with Crazy and Yogurt driving two tier 6 scout tanks. In this replay I'm going to show you everything why platoons are in the game and how a platoon should be played. First of all, let's see what this game is going to be like. Well, first of all, I tell my team, my teammates, okay guys, let's not attack right away. Let's, uh, I first want to see how the game develops because I don't really know what the enemy has planned on us. If we wish to go down this alleyway right here and we would have stayed here on the map northwest at this stone here and the enemy would rush here, then we would die immediately. So I say, okay guys, let's wait here in this small, yeah, how do you call this, small slope kind of thing. I always wait for the game to develop a northwest on this position if, I've, if I get the chance. Because this alleyway of the map is pretty much closed off from the rest of the map. If there's a big horde of enemy tanks coming from here, we will of course run away. But if they are small uh, troops of enemy tanks, we will of course try to take them down. And there are the first enemy spotted, the T-69 and the T-71. We first, of course, want to kill these guys because they have our flank. I tell my team, of yeah, my platoon mates, don't trade with these guys. You don't have the health. I've got the health. I will trade all the shots if needed. So I see that Yogurt is taking shots. I'm going after the T-71 to block shots for him. For him. But don't have a shot at the T-71, so I shoot the T-69 instead. Well, now the T-71 is trying to flank us. I want to block him, trying to block shots, not putting it to my two mates because they have got a low amount of health. Side scraping out the T-69 here, putting a shot into him, and he is reduced to a one-shot. And the T-71 is also reduced to a one-shot. So what I do now, I see that he's reloading, I guess. Doesn't matter anymore because I punch his ticket. Unfortunately, Yogurt gets taken out. And the T-71 is also out. Okay, what I tell now, what I'm thinking. I'm telling my platoon to pull back. What we don't want to do is get overconfident now and attack the enemy right away. I first want to see where the rest of the enemy tanks are. Because I think that the game is not developed far enough for us to make a move. So well now, I see at the middle of the map here that there are two Rheinmetall Borsix right here and there's only one Yak Tiger holding up that flank. So I am telling my platoon, come on guys, we're going to defend and help that Yak Tiger out. I wait for Crazy to turn around and we go off together. So we're going to help the Yak Tiger out trying to kill those two Borsix. Four six, as you should know, are German tier 8 tank destroyers with almost no armor, with great guns for their tiers. Crazy puts a good shot into him there. And what we want to do is take those guys down. We absolutely don't want to take shots from these guys because their guns are devastating for our tanks. Have a shot. I shoot the lower tier of the lower health Borsig ones and I dodge his shot. Well now... Put one shot more into the other Borosik because the other one has pulled back. And now I load high explosive shells. High explosive shells can do a higher amount of damage but have a lower penetration value. But because Borosiks don't have a lot of armor, is it of course really handy to put those shots into them. You can do a higher amount of damage and of course have more and higher chance to damage crew members or modules. Another good shot there. What you have to do with high explosive shells, never aim in tracks because the tracks can eat the damage. Never ever ever shoot high explosive into tracks, only on flat surfaces like the gun shield of the Rheinmetall Borsig. Well now, what we don't want to do is push forward because it's very likely that the base campers will take us down. So what we say, okay we're going back to the base because one, this flank is lost and attacking here is no option. What we have to do now, 
I'm on 2,000 damage already, so it's already a good game for this tank. And I think by myself... Okay, there's a lot of enemy tanks on that flank, so what I think... Crazy, I will go up there, fight them one-on-one. -on -one. But what you do, not don't go with me, because it will won't be a clear engagement if you will fight side to side with me. So try to find a position from the side to support me. He says, alright, I'll do that, that's fine. So I go off towards this side. Well now, what's happening as well is that our team here, two Rheinmetall Borsigs and a Super Pershing are making the foolish move of attacking the enemy base, which in my opinion isn't what you should do. You should always try to defend your own base. Well now, as you can see, the enemy have got a really good defensive position here. And of course have got these mountains here where they can defend their base from. So it's almost a lost situation to try and attack the enemy base if you don't have the whole of your team with you. Borsik makes a good kill there on the of Klaurung's Panther. It's a good scout tank and that thing is gone. So now I'm going off towards the what I think is going to be a one-on-one -on -one engagement. But the object 416 on the enemy team is a really strong player. So I definitely want to know. He definitely knows what he's doing. So. Crazy is trying to find a position to support me. But as you can see. The most of the enemy tanks are spotted on the other side of the map again. To defend their own base. So it's very likely that every enemy tank has pulled back. To defend their own base. But I can't be sure. So I want to stay in this position for a bit longer. To see if every tank has returned to their own base. I don't know if this is very safe what I'm doing here. Because as you can see I'm the only one on this flank. Crazy is not in a position yet to, spot, to help support me. So it can be really dangerous. If I get caught out on this position now. It's not going to be really good for me. What I first want to do is spot because I don't want to go to the enemy base on my own. I can't defeat, uh, uh, yeah, kill all those enemy tanks on my own. The Rheinmetall Borosigs are dead and there's only one Super Pershing left on the other side of the map. As you can see, the object is also spotted now on the other side of the map. So it's very likely that they don't have any tanks on this part of the map anymore. The Super Pershing is surrounded. And he gets taken out. So now I think, okay, all the enemy forces are at their base. And it's very likely that they will, of course, now push down this flank here to put pressure up on our base. So what I say to Crazy, okay, we're going to set up an ambush for that. We're going to drive down here through the middle and wait in this pause here where we started the game. To hopefully put side shots in as they proceed through this alleyway. To be a bit careful driving here because there are... Mountains and hills all around us. Don't want to take damage from them, of course. Well, now that Borsig goes ham as hell. Not sure what he's thinking. Maybe he wants to try and flank the enemy to put some shots into him. But if he yeah, gets the attention of the enemy tanks. And they will all, of course, try to put their focus onto him. So it's really important that we go in there as quickly as possible. Okay, one Rheinmetall Borsig of the enemy is spotted. And we go down here. T-37 is going after the Borsig, so that's not good for us. Well now, let's see what tanks are standing down here. God, there's a Super Pershing and there is an ISU behind me. I tell the crazy, you take care of the ISU, I will take care of the super pershing luckily for crazy the isu is a really low health but i've got my own problems here i have to kill a full health super pershing and one of my shots goes into his spaced armor which is never going to penetrate of course the super pershing doesn't have really good armor as long as he yeah drives around corners foolishly as he did right now and if you don't hit his spaced armor Two of his shots got absorbed in my tracks and I foolishly repaired my tracks because I might have thought that he put two penetrating shots into me. 
And now I'm face hugging this guy, not really sure why. But then I see the T-37 and I pull back to avoid his fire. Crazy takes out the Super Pershing as he just take, took out the ISU as well. Really well done by Crazy there. Well now, I'm on 3000 damage and there's only two enemy tanks left. The object and the Rheinmetall Borsig. It's really likely that the object and the Rheinmetall Borsig will of course team up to try and take us down. So what my plan is, we have to also plan an ambush to try and find the enemy of course. As you can see we're staying in this place a bit to think about a plan. And my plan was to try to find them before they find us. So what uh, my plan was, drive down here, drive down this alleyway and then drive down here back to the base because the object is last being spotted on the other side lower part of the map so we're going to drive down here we have to be careful here though because the Borsig or the object might be camping at the base to try and get the ambush off on us so I first want to see if the ambush is going to happen here if not we're going to proceed Doesn't look like anything. I wait for my binoculars to activate. Nothing happens. So we are going. My goal with this plan was, was to hopefully get around the back of the enemy and then take them down. Just before we started this plan I told Crazy. Okay if the enemy would expect us coming behind them. I will take all the shots. Because Crazy is of course a scout tank with almost no health remaining. And it's really important that we both stay alive in this engagement. If one of us gets taken out, it's going to be really hard for one of us to kill both of the enemy. So I have to take all the shots I can to save Crazy's life. And then we of course have to kill the enemy as quickly as possible. Doesn't look like they have went this way, so I'm thinking about where they could be. Well, again, it's very likely that they have teamed up. It's not very likely that they have gone around all this way. They haven't been in this position here, so I think, okay, they have to be in the middle around here somewhere. So, Crazy and I am going off towards the middle now. It's been a really good game so far, and it would be absolutely... Uh, heartbreaking if we would lose this so we are trying our best of course but as you can see our support at the base the Yak Tiger 88 doesn't have that much health remaining and the Borsig is easily capable of killing a Yak Tiger 88 same for the object well now we're going through the middle to try and get the ambush off on our opponents especially that object because he is Statistically the best enemy tank player. Really have to be careful. Me in front. Crazy behind me. I will take the shots. He will support me. Good looking around here to see where he is. Or where he might be. And there he is. So now I'm going in. Making a foolish move. Firing, firing on the move. He puts two shots into me and I run into death. But now the Borsig hasn't been spotted yet. He spots to my right and takes me out. Unfortunately Crazy now has got the, some shots up on him. The RT misses but Crazy has delayed a bit because he got stuck in the ground and gets taken out as well. That was some really painful stuff for me. At the end, I was very nervous in that situation, to be honest, and I screwed it up. Crazy got unlucky that I got stuck in some of wood pillars, or... Yeah, so he wasn't able to get the Borsig killed. Unfortunately, the Hummel Mist could have easily been the... Yeah, death of the Rheinmetall Borsig, of course. But as you can see, the time is almost up for this game. And I still think that we were going to lose this because there's a Rheinmetall Borsig left. I was very, very sad that we did not manage to win this game. I was very, very, very sad. 
it's undoubtedly that I made some misplays in this game and I will of course feature the misplays when I will be talking about it in the game stats. The Yak Tiger gets taken out of course just as I expected. The Yak Tiger put in one shot but the Hummel gets down but at a certain point the time is up. Throughout the game we were playing really well and I was thinking really well about how the movements of the enemy would be. Unfortunately at the end of the game you saw it right there I was making the great misplay of firing on the move against the object 416. What I probably should have done is stopped and aimed at him and made the killing shot happen. As I did that he probably would have only put one shot into me instead of two and I didn't take the ramp damage because I lost almost all of my health against that 416 but don't be too offended because I do was really really nervous about how this game would turn out and that yeah nervousity cost me the game after that I got killed by the Rheinmetall Borsig but if I would have killed the uh, the object with that shot I probably would have got one shot into the Borsig as well well, Crazy could kill him with two shots from his autoloader. But as you can see, as the time was up for both teams, this game ended up being a draw. I was top on damage with 3200 damage. I got the third class medal and as you can see, my mark of excellence on the T44. We again got a crap load of tokens, fighter, master gunner, duelist, fire four effect and bruiser. Bruiser is probably because I damaged a lot of crew members and modules from the Boar 6 firing those high explosive shells. Still I was really happy that we got a result like this. We almost won a game against really good players. But unfortunately those big misplays at the end of the game cost us the game. Especially me, I think that I should have done it a little bit differently. But luckily i was smart enough to know what my misplays were in that situation and i can do it differently and the next time i get in that sort of situations hopefully you still like the video though i hopefully showcased everything you need to know about platoon and platoon playing we of course showed some really good marksmanship between our platoons and i hopefully have told you guys everything that I thought well enough to understand what is going through my mind during these battles. Of course leave a like as it did put a lot of time making this video and also leave a like for the horrible defeat caused by me. If you guys want me to make more of these platoon replay videos please comment down below. You can also comment down below what you should have done in this sort of situation. Guys I'll see you next time.